Hi and welcome everyone. This is the Hobo Prepper. I am Friar Tuck. Thank you for joining me. Okay, so what today's uh, video is, is it's going to be a teaser video. Um, I'm talking with a former Marine that uh, guarded the walls of Gitmo and we talked about siege training and how to practice for it, kind of what to do, you know, all these different things that we uh, that we planned uh, or th that we talked about. And so the way that it works, if you, if, uh, anybody does an interview with me and then there are tips left in the tip jar from that video, then, uh, I split it with them 50% as a way to, uh, kind of incentivize them to sit down and talk with me because, you know, they don't want to one, feel exploited and two, you know, it's just, it's about being fair and, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's about the information is valuable enough to where, uh, I, I make that offer to them because I think it will be valuable to you guys. Okay. So sit back, enjoy the video, like, subscribe, share. If you like content like this, uh, and, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Damn chair. <laughs> right. Do you want a different chair? Huh? Do you want a different no, chair? No, I'm good. Let's do what we're gonna do. All right. I'm gonna look good. I got my show on. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Hi and welcome everyone. This is the Hobo Prepper, and I am Friar Tuck. Today I have Toast with me. Say hi, Toast. Hey, hey, how all that there? Okay, hey, so doing? Toast was a Marine. Mm -hmm. Um, he served in the United States Marine Corps between what years? 1994 and 1998. 94, 98, and you served at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba? Yes, sir. Okay, from, uh, like, how long were you there? From uh, 1995 to 1996. We served one year down there in my overseas uh, deployment. Okay. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what did you do? What was your what was your uh, duty? Um, down there, well, we were security force for the United States um, naval base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. That's we guarded right. we guarded defense line. That was our job down there. Um, wasn't too bad, you know. Uh, we we go down there and you go through the basic little security uh, force training uh, thing the Marine Corps provides for us down there, and then um, then you learn how to go out there and man your post. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Protect our base from the. And so you were a machine gunner, correct? Yes, I was a machine gunner. Okay, so as a machine gunner. They, they put you on, on what you said, lookout posts? Yes, M MOPs, man observation posts. Okay, like how, what what was the purpose, like what is the advantage of that? And to somebody that maybe has a homestead or has, you know, maybe 40, 50 acres that they want to uh, keep secure, yeah. how, kind of explain to us the benefit and, and how to put something like that up. Like how, how would somebody set something like this up if they wanted to? And just kind mm. of explain the benefits as well. Well, it's just kind of a, it's a lookout post, what it is, you know what I'm saying, where you can uh, uh, observe have, if you got somebody up there. You're observing everything, you know, uh, kind of before it gets to you, if, if there was something coming your way, you know what I'm saying. And, okay. um, About how far do you actually get to see, though? Well, it's according, to, it's according to the terrain and where you're at also, you know. But uh, those posts down in Cuba, we could see, oh, shit, hundreds of yards out through there, you know. Well, it's kind of thick, you know, but. Okay, so you're you're looking through but, jungle, yeah, and you yeah, still yeah. have like a, a you know hundreds of yards that you. Well, can it see. ain't jungle down there where we were at. It's uh, kind of a uh, inlet, you know what I'm saying? A bunch of scrubs, low bush stuff. Uh, okay. But we're in we're in posts like a hundred foot tall, 80, 80, 100 foot tall. You know what I'm saying? There's man okay. observation posts, and so, then you got to set a big eyes on there, and you got a heat camera, thermal camera, so okay. you can see things at night. You know what I'm saying? Anything that's warm whatever you say big eyes are you talking about the big binoculars yes yeah, huge binoculars like they used to have on old navy ships oh wow so you like you look through a looking glass to to keep all that and yes, like are yes. you able to see lots of detail like uh, how oh, much yeah, yeah. warning are you able to get from a man uh, from a mop oh lord uh well in that scenario down there you could probably see a thousand meters probably you know um it's hit and miss because it's kind of thick but there's a road kind of all the way around their side of the fence you know what I mean? There's a road down there that they patrol also, you okay, know. Okay, so it's yeah. it's not, it, it's kind of like an extra set of eyes, but it's not really as, it, yeah, yeah. it's not that beneficial. If you see movement, those big eyes will, they'll tell you what it is. You know what I'm saying? You get on it, you can, you can get on them with that and, and see exactly what's coming your way. Okay, so what about like if you guys were under siege? So uh, we're talking about nobody in, nobody out, mm -hmm. you're being assaulted from all, all sides. Uh, kind of walk us, walk us through, 
something how how would you in, in the Marine Corps in, in that situation to protect Cuba how would you how would you handle that well if we were getting attacked we have we always got a backup plan the Marine Corps does you know what I mean you would ask kind of that well kind of what we were set up in a defense position you know what I'm saying so you you're being prepared for what you think might come your way you know what I'm saying that's that's about the best you can do unless you know exactly the the uh, if you had an enemy force coming to you you know what I'm saying you you okay, be prepared for it did you ever have to engage anyone while you were while you were? Yes, we were had not really actually physically. I mean, like uh, uh, we didn't have to use no deadly force really. Most of it was just like uh, uh, just a step above deadly force. You know, we had a lot of migrants coming over then, mm -hmm. so all the civilians that were in Cuba then, they the American that were there down there with their family or whatever that was in the service, they had to leave because we had like forty thousand migrants come over to the base. Oh. In, in our, that period of time, and those migrants got a check. If you wasn't like a, a, a criminal or something in Cuba, you got to go to the United States if you had family over there. Oh wow! And that was because they were coming to the base. They were coming to the base. I don't I don't remember exactly what was going on, but kind of like if you get over there, then you got a ticket to the United States, maybe kind of sort of. That's that's an interesting scenario because I mean, you you want to be able to distinguish between friendly and not friendly. Yes. Like, what signs are you looking for, especially, like, if you... Out of the actual city. individuals? Well, yeah, because, I mean, yeah. like, they wear camo, you wear camo, yeah. they may wear different color yeah. greens. Well, like well like, their, their military for? has their, their, their camis, you know, they wear whatever. Mm -hmm. But the migrants, if, if we're talking about them, that came over there, you know what? They were good old freaking down-home people who just wanted a better life, really. Okay. And uh, they thought going to America would give it to them, you know, and, uh, in some scenarios, yeah, but they, they, those people... They were back in time a little bit, you know. Uh, I believe they're uh, um, the. Uh, I'm telling. It looked like looking back in the '70s. If you were looking through the big eyes in the city of Camden area over there, it looked like you were looking back in time. With the stuff they drove. The, okay, they so wore. let's get back to let's get back okay. to the siege part because I think that this is probably okay, yeah, yeah, one of the things that yeah. you can that you can really uh, inform yeah. us on. Okay. So if you're if you're under siege mm -hmm. and you know you're going to be under siege for days, weeks, or months. Mm -hmm. What is your plan? What is your rationing? What is your preparation? If you're going to be, okay, if you know you're going to be dug in somewhere and you're going to be, you're preparing yourself for something, whatever it be, be a storm, could be a, a some type of enemy hitting you or something, whatever, you know, you, my suggestion would uh, have you some uh, good uh, defense positions, maybe uh, built in around your house, you know, whether it be a, a duck, some duck, like a foxhole, little bunker things, you know what I'm saying? to uh, uh, put up and store you some food and plant your garden, you know what I mean? Okay, plant you a garden. Try to grow your stuff if you can. You know, If not, then you have to live off the land where okay. you secure your meat. So what, what uh, in the Marine Corps, they teach you a little mm -hmm. bit of survival training in case you get stranded, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so like if you were to get out in the middle of nowhere, no food, no water, what would you do? Like if you had to exit a situation because you got overran, Mm -hmm. And you had to forage for yourself. What are you eating? Whatever you can catch. Okay. Whatever you, uh, uh, bugs, you know. Um, some bugs. bugs are good for you if you know which ones to eat. You know, okay, really. kind of give us an idea of bugs. Grubs, grubs, like grubs in a rotten log or something. You know, you roll over and you find little grubs in there. Okay. Real high in protein and stuff. Okay, so grubs are protein. Grubs, what else? big time protein. <laughs> um, uh, certain vegetation, you know what I mean? According to the scenario where you're at, you know what I'm saying? Thank you, but though. Pretty, I mean, there's there's a, there's, there's a lot there, and there's a lot of deer down there. Deer, rabbits, stuff like that. You know, you can set up snares, maybe. You know what I'm saying? And you catch your meat, and then you want to smoke it. You know what I'm saying? You kind of, you know what I mean? That's the, but the quick thing would be eating stuff like bugs. You know, I mean, grubs, not just any bug. You know, but berries. You know, stuff like that. You okay. Know. And any any tips, like basic, like rhymes that you have to help you figure out what to eat and what not to eat as far as plant life and berries and stuff? Um.